Hey everybody, this is another of the 2018 LEGO City Arctic Exploration sets. This one's called Arctic Supply Plane, so let's look at the plane first. When I first saw pictures of these Arctic sets for this year, I have to be honest, I kind of just dismissed this plane as yet another sort of generic aircraft based around or built from this preformed specialized canopy piece. Uh, a lot of them, whether helicopter or, or airplane, have been very, very similar and not that great. Uh, they've started to get a little bit better, but uh, upon building this particular model here, I realized that they definitely have gotten better yet again with this plane here. This one has a little bit of upward rake when it's sitting on the ground, so it's leaning back a little bit, and it has this whole section that is widened out. It's not just the standard six wide build using that canopy. From there, they widen it out. The fuselage gets wider right here, which is kind of believable, and it makes sense, and it makes it a more interesting build. And it looks more cool to me. They use some studs on the side construction here as well. You've got lots of skids rather than just using the minimum. They doubled these up, the, the skis underneath. They double them up. You're not able to steer. Well, actually, correction. You are able to steer the nose gear, if you will, or the nose skid there. But uh, it definitely looks better having the doubles rather than the minimum singles. And, yeah, all that extra thickness is good. The only thing that I don't like about the look of this is... The, the the open surfaces on the tops of the wings that have no tiles whatsoever. It's just very contrasty, just how many studs are here compared to the rest of the build. I have nothing against studs in general, just, you know, just the appearance of them. That's kind of the hallmark of, of Lego, but this has so many smooth surfaces on it, especially with all the tiles they add over here, that this kind of stands out. Also, it would have been nice to get slightly wider wings, but that honestly doesn't bother me that much. Got the T-tail back here. It's obviously supposed to be turbo fan based uh, aircraft. And check this out. Something that they often do poorly. Uh, the main cockpit section does not have any control sticks, but at least it does have a printed console piece at the front. But you can fit not only a pilot here, but also a co-pilot, navigator, or just secondary individual back here. So that's a big improvement from the usual where you have this big old plane. It's just able to hold one person and a little bit of cargo. Well, when it comes to cargo, check this out now. You've got the, the ramp that comes down at the back. That's pretty plain. But you can also lift up the tail to give you easier access inside of there. And this has enough room to hold a snow machine or a couple of crates of cargo. I can just slide on down in there. I think there's a little bit of room left over after that. And those don't even take up all the space inside, but that's good. And if one gets stuck in there, you can get your finger in from the other side because there's enough access. Even though it's not that easy to remove the, the roof, you can just pull all of this up. But inside of these crates, you'll find some additional little accessories. So this one has a circular saw there, a radio, a walkie-talkie unit, and a pair of snowshoes in the yellowish orange or orangish yellow color and then this one has different stuff has a couple of batons and also a laptop it's a piece that's been around for quite a while just folds no sticker for the screen for that one but it's got the old keyboard kind of molded into it so you know there's some cargo but you can also take along with it the most precious cargo of this set which is supposed to be a a perfectly preserved frozen a saber-tooth cat. Of course, a lot of kids, for the sake of play, are going to imagine this coming to life. Uh, maybe they'll be taking it to a zoo or, or taking it to an animal hospital or something, but you can put that in there as well. So all the important stuff from this set can be... I think I need to bring this down a little bit or turn it around. One of the two. All the important things from this set can be transported in this plane. There we go. That works. Let me bring this back down. So it actually works pretty well, and you can put two figures in there. Uh, if you don't put cargo in the back, you could put other figures back there as well. But yeah, it's it's not too fancy of a plane. It's not too special, but it's definitely better than the usual, at least in my opinion. A lot of people have been waiting for this saber-toothed cat to come out, so I won't make you wait any longer. Let's take a closer look at it in this video. It looks pretty good. 
Uh, the eyes look like they were drawn by someone who does graphics for the Lego Friends line uh, to me. Just, you know, it's not quite as much minifig-like as many of the other minifig set-based animals have been, just in the expression in the eyes, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, it does use dual molding for the teeth, so those are a nice bright white, and that white does not scratch off. And you don't have to worry about that being inconsistent from you know from one unit to the next they will all be nice and bright white like that so that's just really good it'll last a long time and then they just have prints along the side so the colors here are medium nougat white and then the print of dark brown and this has all the normal articulation of the cats so it can be raised up and reared up like so and you can actually get it to stay like that yeah so yeah, this, this works out pretty well. It's a lot better in my opinion than the woolly mammoth that they did for this series in that you know you can actually pose it and it looks like it's alive, which is kind of cool uh, if you want to bring it to life in your own you know, little stories. It has a couple studs on the top as usual. Those are uh, open studs so you can fit bar shaped things in there or you can just attach things on the top, including people if you want to have somebody riding it your own stories there you go that works just fine it's cool i like it the premise of the set then has the arctic explorers finding this perfectly preserved specimen locked in the ice and then they need to come along and get it out to take it back for a study uh, and to you know prepare it to be preserved even longer while we continue to admire it in its full form and this whole snow and ice formation looks pretty nice. It's too bad there is no cover over the top. You know, it's already been partly melted away. Maybe that's how they discovered it in, in the first place. Or maybe it's been chipped away a little bit. But uh, you can kind of put your own story behind that. But overall, it looks pretty cool. And it's interesting that they used a couple of windscreen pieces in here. Uh, one of those pieces, an additional one, a third one, is used on the machine that will be used to get the the cat out the rest of the way because this has some sections that are intended to be slightly removed and i'll just show you that very quickly and we'll focus on this thing basically what happens is it's supposed to come along and just start tearing stuff up and you just, i guess you have to be careful not to to damage the specimen because uh, it's it's easy to do it's easy to cause damage to it but yeah, get this going. Let me get that last piece off there. Come on, get out there. Uh, uh, trying to get it, get it. Uh, 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 there we go. That one didn't want to come off quite as easily. It's attached with uh, two studs. The others are attached with just one each. But that's the general idea here. That without doing any damage to the cat itself, you're supposed to knock some of those off. It does not work as well as in the the bigger set, especially with this last piece, and also the fact that it is. Uh, open on the top makes it kind of dangerous, you know, if you're trying to have semi-accurate play or just, you know, taking it a little bit seriously, uh, you may have to worry about actually hitting the thing. You might want to just get in there with some, some chisels and hammers, which unfortunately they don't include in the set, you know, little stuff to be careful with. Nevertheless, this thing is uh, pretty unique amongst LEGO vehicles. I don't think I've seen them do anything quite like this before. I'm surprised that they actually did four independent track segments, and these can actually be articulated a little bit over terrain. Uh, the, the treads themselves are a little bit loose, which makes it easy to get this to actually roll. There are no cheater wheels in the center or anything or on the bottom of this. It's, it's all very genuine in how it works. So they do have rubber tires on the insides here, but uh, that just... It just helps everything to work and doesn't really hurt anything in terms of how it looks or how it plays. I could have gone for some additional bushings, just half bushings to cover these dark tan axles that stick out a little bit. But this thing looks really cool. I like the angles of the, the arm here and how it can be articulated in multiple different places. You can't go up and down in right from here, you know, your, your first point of articulation is up above the cab, but I think that's fine. Like, I mean, you can bring it out horizontally like that to go into ice in front of you, and the entire cab with the arm 
rotates around. Look at this, it spins all the way around, 360 degrees. That's good design. I like that. I want to customize this, and I want to encourage kids to customize this with different attachments. These pieces are pretty common, or you can pull that out. Things that attach to that are pretty common, or you can use just one at a time. Go to town, come up with different things to do with this, because this is a very nice base for a construction style vehicle. You got a couple lights up here for lighting the way to make sure that you can always see what you're going to do. This works just fine right here. It does require that pieces be a little bit loose as I showed you, but yeah, it's cool. This is a new part for 2018 if I'm not mistaken. It has the teeth facing in both directions, so it's able to cut this way and that way. Um, it's uh, just one year old a bush bar bush bar piece here on the front more lights on the sides more lights up here and an operator just gets into the cab the usual way remove part of this and there's that other windscreen piece that they used also for some of the ice and it has a couple of control sticks in the cab and you can actually kind of turn those around have to be a little bit careful but you can turn them so that they will angle out and fit into the hands of an operator this is just this is just good I like this way more than I expected to. I think that they uh, they did more with this than they needed to to make this successful. I think that as a tracked vehicle, they easily could have done just one track per side, you know, kind of the normal thing. Uh, they could have had just a, a, a single turret section for for all of it up on top. But yeah, this is this is different, and I want to see kids who get this using it for a long time and customizing it. Because uh, I think it, it deserves that extra attention and that extra use. There's good value here. The last and smallest build is the snow machine, which is fine. I like its small, compact size. It's fully brick built. Doesn't use any real, you know, preformed parts. And you know, they kind of simulate the track there again, just using regular pieces. It, it doesn't have any parts that roll because of that, but it slides around just fine. Uh, it doesn't get caught up on things too much on like low pile carpeting and such, so you can have fun with it. It doesn't steer, but uh, again, just being nice and small, kind of appropriate in size and scale to the minifigures, I think that works out pretty well. And they have a second seat back there. You can put a second person back there very easily, either back here, give them a little extra room, or you can get them up closer, and that works just fine as well. See, that's cool. Small build, holds two people, looks realistic enough, and it just seems fun. Another successful small build here. Here's a closer look at those two figures with new torso prints for 2018. A little bit thin on the, the yellow printing on the guy on the left. Wish that was a little bit more opaque to better match the color of the plastic of the arm. They really need to, to work on their, their printing quality. <laughs> it definitely works out much better when they print a uh, lighter color against a medium to light colored background or plastic. But you can also make that work if you just add like a primer down first of, of some white. So they can do better than that, but they didn't. Let me take these headgear pieces off. You can see there are no alternate faces, but I do want you to see their main faces, clearly. The guy on the left has his mouth mounted just a little bit low on his face, kind of changes his facial proportions, and I'm okay with that. It's good to get a little extra variety rather than just expressions. And here are the other two figures, four minifigures in this set in total. On the left is the pilot for the plane, and on the right is just another random researcher. And you, know, you can give the different people whatever roles you prefer, but pretty good torso prints here on both. I really love the dark azure color. That's what color that is, the, the lighter of the blues. Works nicely with the, the white and contrasts pretty well against the dark blue as well. I think just in general a nice color scheme here, something a little bit different, and it works out pretty well in the builds as well, where they, where they have just a little bit of that medium, excuse me, that dark azure color. So overall, this feels like a pretty successful set to me. The only thing that I really don't like here is how precarious the ice block is and how open it is on top. Just thinking of kind of the fantasy 
play of actually coming in here with the saw and worrying about damaging the specimen, but that's pretty easy to correct by adding just a few pieces on top there to give it a little, little bit of distance. But certainly this thing here is unique and really cool and just begs to be expanded upon and customized. The plane that I thought was going to be very plain, P-L-A-I-N, is definitely better than I expected. Maybe not the most unique looking thing and the, the air intakes, I didn't talk about that before, but the air intakes are a little bit of a disappointment in how they look to me, especially from the front. But I mean, that's, that's a tiny detail. Play value is good, holds a good amount of, of cargo for its size. It's easy to get access to each of the compartments, at least holds two people in the front. You know, it's pretty well done. It's done, I think, better than, than most of them are. This is fine, that's fine. The cat is good. This build, other than just the lowness of that top part, looks nice even just on display. The figures are cool. I feel like the value, uh, looking at the price to part ratio and the price to volume of stuff ratios, is good here actually uh, even even in the u.s where it looks like it's about about the worst on on paper i believe compared to what we're used to uh, still it's not bad i feel like you get a better value here with this set than you do with the larger set uh, by far the mobile exploration base so good stuff <laughs> my only complaints are very minor and very correctable that's it for my thoughts then. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you again soon.